Hey there! Welcome back to the Guru Vlogger ng Kuwait channel. We are group 5 and today join us as we will be exploring the nature of communication. people living on this lonely universe, we all tend to crave that certain human interaction in order to go about our day. Communication is very vital in the progression of human life, letting a person understand the external information being brought to them. As human beings, we are able to interact with one another through our body language, writing skills, facial expressions, gestures, eye contact, and of course, our speaking voice. Things where we can interact are like knowing when your teacher is calling out your name, understanding what a crying child may be asking for, or even finding out what your significant other may be hiding from you. Scary, but at least you will get to know the other end of the rope. Communication is not just there to enjoy life or to impress, but it is there for our needs, to attain our human needs in life. Communication is formally known as the intricate process of sharing ideas, thoughts, and information. Using communication, we are able to transfer and receive information from one place, person, or group to another. It is basically information's mode of transportation. It is important to uphold a good communication skills as this will help you attain success in many fields of one's future career. Communication helps us live our everyday life smoothly. Using this as our mode of human interactions and a way to get what we need. Our ancestors used to make tribal sounds, songs, and chants to help them communicate with one another. They also used drums and whistles to interact. During today's modern age, communication has become the instrument to success in attaining a good job, interacting with loved ones, and many more. If it was not important back then, well, it is important now to know how to properly communicate with confidence and clarity. As what May said, confidence and clarity are very important when it comes to your communication skills. Although, as amateurs, we tend to stammer or forget some words. This is why we need to develop these skills. In order to improve your communication skills, here are some tips. Firstly, make communication a priority. Prioritize communication as something essential in human interaction. Secondly, simplify and stay on message. Be straight to the point. No one wants to hear unnecessary parts of a story. Everyone wants to hear the main message. Thirdly, engage your listeners or readers. Make sure that they feel like they are a part of what you are giving them. The information you are giving should connect to them. While you are doing that, fourthly, is to take your time to respond and make sure you are understood by your audience. Fifth, is to develop your listening skills. Your listening skills is as important as your speaking skills in order to communicate properly with your peers. Next, is to focus on giving out proper body language and maintaining eye contact. This shows the audience that you are confident enough in yourself to give out the information you are giving them. How is the audience going to rely on what you are giving? How is the audience going to know that you are not afraid to face them? Lastly, you must respect your audience. They took their time out of their precious day in order to listen to you. So you must adequately respect them. Now that we have defined communication and know what to do in order to become a better communicator, here are the three main types of communication. Firstly, we have verbal communication. Verbal communication is basically speaking with your voice, just what I am doing right now. Secondly, we have the non-verbal communication. This is everything your body can physically do without using your voice. This includes your body language, eye contact, posture, gestures, and many more. Basically, you don't need to speak in order to give out a message. And in this judgmental world, many people will judge you even though you don't say anything. 
Lastly, we have visual communication. In visual communication, this is basically the conveyance of ideas and information through charts, graphs, clip art, and electronic images. This gives the audience the opportunity to create their own explanation about the message of the certain graphic they are looking at. Now that we know all the basics of communication, it is time to expand our knowledge. Communication is a simple topic that was expanded through different branches of itself, including having structures called the models of communication, which helps us understand more about communication. Communication is a very big topic with a lot of varieties to grasp. One way to understand communication is analyzing it graphically with the use of models of communication. These were developed by authors and developers who aim to give different views on the topic of communication. One of the models of communication is Aristotle's model, wherein this model of communication is mainly focused on the speaker and verbal speech, having five elements in it, which are the speaker, the speech, occasion, effect, and the audience. The speaker is basically the only active participant in this model, whereas the audience only listens to the speech, making them a passive counterpart. So there is only a one-way trip ticket of information which is from the speaker who sends his message to the audience, who are the recipient listening to this message. This model is also known as a linear model, wherein only one party encodes and transmits their message while the other party decodes and receives the information, but this party does not do the same as the other. For example, a boy giving out a speech to an audience is considered to be an example of this model, as the boy is basically the speaker sending out this information to the audience who is the recipient of this information. This model is popular and widely used in public speaking rather than occasional communication. And the next model of communication that we shall tell you is all about the Shannon Weaver's model of communication. This model is also deemed to be the telephone model. Shannon Weaver's model is a collaboration between Claude Shannon and Warren Weaver which was developed in the 1949, following the development of the world-renowned communication device known as the telephone. In this model, there are six elements, which are the sender, encoder, channel, noise, decoder, and the receiver. As defined, the model showcases the process of sending information. Firstly, the sender encodes a message of information through the channel of technology, which could be a simple text message, which is then received by the recipient and they're able to decode the message. The noise involved can be rooted from how the noise somewhat interferes as background sound or bad signals during a phone call. Most authors deem that this model of communication as non-verbal, as it is true text messaging, and lacking feedback because the person on the other end may or may not respond or see the text, making this disadvantage on behalf of the model. For example, a guy could text his friend to meet him in a restaurant nearby at 6. He encodes this message and sends it through a messaging app to which his friend, the recipient, receives and decodes to understand. The guy patiently waits for his friend at 6 a.m. until the friend arrives at 6 p.m. as the message lacked a time. This showcases the disadvantage of the model as there is no certain feedback for the sender to rely on and to know that their message was conveyed correctly by the recipient. Another model of communication is Osgood Scram's model, which is a circular model unlike the other previous linear models. The elements in this model are the message, encoder, interpreter, and decoder. As you can see on the left circle of the model, the encoder creates a message, which is sent to the decoder. This message is decoded and interpreted by the decoder. When they fully understand what the message means, they encode a message and then send it to the previous sender. The sender who was once the encoder becomes the decoder and interpreter this time. For example, imagine that you and your friends are on an airplane going to a wonderful holiday getaway. You all get hungry on the plane and become excited once the flight attendant approaches your aisle with food. The flight attendant asks what you and your friends want to eat. 
wherein each of you respond with different dishes available on the plain food menu. The flight attendant gladly gives a reassuring okay and prepares the meals right away. Here we can see how the flight attendant is the sender of the message, who encoded this message and sent it verbally to you and your friends. You and your friends then become the recipient of the message, wherein you guys are the decoders and interpreters. Basically, you guys immediately decode this message, interpret it in your own heads, and then encode a message to send it back to the flight attendant, which are the types of meals that you guys want to eat. Now, the flight attendant is the new decoder. She interprets all of the foods you want to eat, and then encodes a new message, which is a reassuring okay that she got the message. Basically, the cycle goes on and on until a conversation is wrapped up, just like how the flight attendant said okay and left to prepare your meals. Here we can see a clear interaction between the two parties within the structure of this model. The next model of communication is the Bowles model of communication, which was heavily inspired by Shander's Weevil mathematical model. This model was created by David Borler, who explained that the source and the receiver must be on the same level in order to achieve m effective communication. This model has four major elements, which are the sender, the message, the channel, and the receiver, each of them having different fra uh, factors accompany them. Under the spender and the receiver are five different factors, which are the communication skills, attitude, knowledge, social system, and culture. Under the message, are the content, the element, the treatment, the structure, and the core. Under the channel are the smelling, tasting, hearing, seeing, and feeling. And Barshaw claimed that the sender and the receiver must have the same equal skills and must be on the same level in order to understand it better. Meaning that if the spender is on a higher level or has higher skills, then the receiver must be on that same skills in order for you to understand it better. Indeed, communication is such a simple topic to understand that has evolved over the years and let us expand our boundaries when it comes to human interaction. We can now say that communication is a very vital part of the progression of human life. This is Guru Logger Nankuwait. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching!